Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem path crossing. We're given a string path. Well, first of all, we start at the origin. Think of it as a 2D grid where maybe we have an X axis and a Y axis. Now in the path itself, we're basically going to be given the directions that we are going to be moving. So the directions are given to us with four characters, north, south, east, and west. North is going to move us up by one. So think of it as incrementing the Y value, but leaving the X value the same. We could even think of it as mapping to the delta, like the difference in X and the difference in Y. How would we represent that for N? Well, thinking of it in terms of a pair of values, like I said, the X value stays the same. So that's gonna be a zero. The Y value though is gonna be incremented by one. So we could think of North as being this direction. That's the direction we're moving in. Now this is obviously a better way of thinking about it because we're dealing with numbers on a coordinate plane. The character N does not really do anything for us. Let's not even think of it in N. Let's focus on this specific mapping. You could do the same thing for all of these other characters. South is obviously the opposite direction of this. X is going to stay the same, but Y is going to go in the opposite direction. So I put a negative one here. Same thing for East and West, except East is going to move us to the right by one. So this is where the X value does change. X will be incremental by one. That's why I'm putting a positive one here. Y does not change. West is the opposite direction. So we change that to a negative one and keep Y the same. Now we know how to actually interpret the path that we're given. For example, the path might be this, N-E-S. This is how it's gonna be given to us, but we don't care about the individual characters. We know N maps to this, E maps to this, S maps to this. So starting at this position, we can follow each of these coordinates and we'll know we move up one, then we move to the right by one, then we move down by one. So this will allow us to actually update our coordinate. It would be zero, one here, it would be one, one here, and it would be one, zero here. Now, given this path, what exactly do we care about? Well, the only thing is, we want to know if we ever visit the same position twice. Now in this path, clearly we don't. Each of these four positions is distinct. In that case, we return false. But if we ever did reach the same position twice, for example, from here, what if the next character in the sequence was a W? That would mean we move west here. That would mean we end up at this coordinate a second time. So in that case, we return true because we do visit the same point multiple times. So that's all we're trying to answer given this path and given this starting coordinate. Now, how exactly do you think we can know if we do visit the same position twice? Probably the easiest way is to keep track of all the positions that we visited. But what data structure should we use? Should we put it in an array? Probably not because looking up values in an array is not super efficient. A better data structure would be something called a hash set, which usually allows the lookup to be really efficient. It's a constant time lookup. So in that hash set, we're gonna store every every single coordinate that we've already visited so that every time we visit a new coordinate, we can immediately check if we visited it before. If we have, we will immediately return true. Otherwise, we will continue with the path until we have gone through the entire path. So with this, the time complexity is gonna be big O of N because in the worst case, we're gonna to have to go through the entire path. Let's assume the length of that is gonna be N. In terms of memory complexity, we might have to have every single coordinate in the hash set and if every coordinate is unique, then the memory complexity is also gonna be big O of N. That's all we need to know. Now let's code this up. We know a couple things. We know we're gonna keep track of visited cells in a hash set, and to this, we're gonna add the pairs of coordinates well, just the coordinates themselves. And we know that the starting point is zero, zero. So X is zero and Y is zero. Now, when we go through every character in this path, we have a couple of choices. What we could do one is we could have four if statements, one for each possible character. If it's N, we know that X is gonna stay the same, but Y is gonna be incremented by one. So we could do something like this. And we could do that for all four cases. But a slightly better thing to do is actually, like I said, have a mapping. We know that 
n is going to map to this delta 0 and 1. x stays the same, but y is incremented by 1. We know that south is going to be kind of the opposite. x does stay the same, but y is going to be decremented by 1. We'll also fill it in for e, and that is moving to the right, and west is moving to the left, so we just take the opposite of above, negative 1 and 0. And the reason why we create this mapping, I know this just because I've seen this type of trick before. We create this mapping because now we don't need four conditions in this loop. What we can say now is whatever that character is, let's use it as the key of the hash map we declared up above. And this will give us the dx, dy I was talking about. This will give us the delta. And now to determine the new location, all we have to do is say x and y are equal to x plus dx and y plus dy. Before I finish up the rest of this part, I want to mention that we started at this coordinate. So one thing I could do is just initialize the hash set like this to make sure that we already know that that's visited. Alternatively though, I could also do it this way. Every time we enter this for loop, I'm going to say that this x, y coordinate is now going to be marked visited. So I could say like this, visit.add this x, y pair. And I think with hash sets, we have to add it like this rather than like as an array, because I think tuples are immutable and that is a requirement to be the key of a hash set. Okay, we've handled that. So whenever we enter this, we're going to mark x, y as visited. But now we have the new coordinate, the new x, y. And before we go to the next iteration of the loop, we should probably check, is this already visited? Is this new x, y coordinate already in the visit hash set? If it is, then we clearly have visited the same position twice. We have crossed a path. So here we are told to return true. Now this loop will pretty much run through the entire path until either it returns here or we reach the end of the loop. If we reach the end of the loop, that means we clearly did not cross paths and out here we can return false. This is the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.